What's up, guys? Welcome to the Father Figure Fitness Podcast. We are produced at Rockwall Recording Studio right here in Rockwall, Texas. www.rockwallrecordingstudio.com for more details. Check it out. It's a cool ass place. Ooh, Mike. They like, well, yeah. get a feel for like who. The only, the only time I listen is if I'm in the car. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Like he's at work, like doing his bullshit. So he's like, I'll have it propped up. So I kind of go back and forth. Yeah. I, I've never just turned on a podcast and just stared at a wall and just listened to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I do it in the car, but even then, sometimes I'll pull it up because, like, I, just I was need listening some, to, uh, like, if it's late at night, I'll pull it up so I can distract myself and keep myself awake. Two beers. I was working out today. The new one with um, Ryan Sickler. He's I, so funny. I put on um, last week's with uh, Jim Jeffries. I put it on with. Jesse, that's pretty good too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> are we rolling? I don't know. Oh, okay, we are? cool. Okay, so oh, this is Brock, um, the bigger, better version of Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> he is filling in because Jesse is fixing to get on a plane. Are these tied into the ones that y'all used to do? Uh-uh. No, not at all. Okay, we, we scrapped that project because yeah. it was a bad project. We got enough. Yeah. So there Brock, was some funny stuff on there though. Yeah, because we, we, weren't, we weren't trying to be serious. We were just like, let's we just go. talked. Yeah. All three of us just talked. Or four of us. Yeah. So Brock used to work with us at the gym. We miss him every day. Um, but now he's a big old roofer. How's it going? Uh, man, it's good. Um, we're still, like, obviously, I told you I'm doing the commercial side. And that's still, I mean, it just takes so much to get started. Yeah, so you're not actually going to projects and stuff right now, right? I am if if we have them going. Like I do, I do basically the project management for my dad, mm-hmm. um, and so he like he doesn't even have to touch projects anymore. Like I just do, I do all that, and he handles the backside. So um, like, what's your day like now? Like are you working just to, so it just depends. So yeah, it depends. Uh, I'll go I'll go to projects when they're when they're going, um, but I also do supplements and I. I'll handle the projects, like the order and the material and, and uh, like getting the crew there and everything. So I handle the projects uh, w- when they happen. Um, but the backside, I do the supplements and the, like the invoices. And I basically, I mean, I don't run the company. But you're like, trying to get him into retirement, right? Basically, he wants to get to the point where he does his stuff every now and then for, you know, the money he needs. You know, because yeah. cause he's going to get money. If I'm doing projects, he's going to get money if his guys are doing projects. Um, but if he has something that he wants to handle, like anyone who's been around for a really long time that he's handled before. They're only going to want him. Yeah, he'll he'll go. I'll still I'll still go project manage, but but he shows his face and, he and he, he's basically he's basically PR and I mean he's the head of the company. So like stuff that's above my pay grade, he handles yeah. all that. So it it's it hasn't gotten to the point where he doesn't have to be there. Like he still has to be that takes years. That takes a long time. Like yeah. if I'm, I need to be him in the next few years before he can really yeah. give it up. And he's never going to really give it up because he, he's a just a busybody. Yeah. Retirement's not good for you. I don't think it is. No, know. he he doesn't want he doesn't want to completely retire. And he and, seems like a guy that would be awful at retirement. Oh yeah, like he just dude, he can't sit still. That's what I mean. Yeah, and and my mom and dad. I mean, everyone works out of the house. I mean, we all literally we got like a desk, and I have my dual monitor set up so I can do the the estimating and everything. Um, and we're all just there, and we can't be like that all the time. Yeah. We we can't because we live together. Well, everything. So I mean, long term, you're gonna move. Yeah, yeah. I actually, <laughs> <Not> I have, <laughs> I'm never going anywhere. No, I, I actually. Uh, a high school buddy um, that I had that actually went to college with me for a year, uh, he has a group of people that he lives with. And so that's probably my next move is either I'll move into their apartment or we'll all get a house together. That's dope. Frisco? Um, Frisco's tough. It's is just, that where they are right now? They're, they're in McKinney. Okay. Um, it's close enough. But it's, dude, it's right there. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a like a four bedroom place um, and it's three dudes and a girl, uh, one of their girlfriends. So there's an open room. And their lease is up in October, so at least by October, I'll either move in there for a year or we'll get a house. So basically, October is like that sounds like my hell. I'm not good at living with people. I I have to live with people. I I have to talk to people. <laughs> I'm sad. Well, I have had a girlfriend or a wife since I was sixteen. Yeah, that's true. But, <clears throat> like my cousin lived with us for six months, and by the end of it, we were like about to fist fight in the living room. Yeah. Like I, I at one point I thought we were gonna, and then. 
he, yeah. Yeah. It, it got you, it got bad. And then Amanda, Jesse's wife, she lived with us right after that. And by the end of it, I was like, this bitch has to go. Yeah, yeah. As soon as she moved out, we were best friends again. Yeah. It was like, oh my my she's like my sister, right? So by the by the end of it, it was like, oh cool, she can be my friend again. Mm-hmm. But, ooh, I'm not gonna live. Yeah, and I and I want that with, with me and my parents on the same way. Yeah. Is because we're with each other so much that that literally like this morning me and my dad were getting into it. And it's yeah. just it's because we're together too much. Yeah. I think, and the reason I'm okay with moving in with those guys for probably a year or so is they have such a good dynamic already. And you just have to mold to that. Exactly. And I already kind of have. I've been hanging out with, as soon as I moved over there, which I guess was a couple months ago, I was trying to think about how long I've been gone. I don't even know. It's February, right? Was that when it was? February? Yeah, yeah. yeah. End of of February. Beginning of, yeah. Beginning of February. Beginning of February, I stopped working there. Okay. And then like two, three weeks later, we moved over. Um but yeah, they they're good people, uh, and and I like hanging out with them, so that'll be easy. But yeah, dude, the the roofing is good. It's it's still it's still in process. I mean, you just gotta you gotta make a name for yourself before people. Yeah. But yeah, we're sending yeah. in bids and everything, and that's cool. So you know, trying to be an adult. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not fun. Nope. It's for me. It's uh, I need some independence. I've. I've either lived with my parents or been in college or been in high school, you know, forever. So now it's like, what's next? Yeah, for sure. Well, it's also, I'm sure it's tough too for you because it's like different for us. Like we were married so young, had kids so young. Like you're just yeah. alone. You're know, just that sounds, it sounds sad, but like seriously, you're just taking care of yourself. So it's different. Yeah. I'm, dude, I'm alone and that's and it's it's a good thing no it's it's a good thing I, I, lo- the way I you love said that alone. i'm alone i'm alone and i mean I, I have these friends that i hang out with you know i have y'all back here like i have i have friends and whatever but for the most part i'm just what i meant is like responsibility wise like you're not taking care of anybody but yeah you, you know? and you guys started that early I mean, right you guys had relationships and commitments early on. yeah it was stupid yeah <laughs> i mean i was not good at being responsible. Yeah. I'm that, still not good at it, dude. I was about to say, I feel like that takes forever. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So how's the new gym? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Gold's. How is it? Uh, oh. Very clean, very nice. It, it's a lot of, um, I probably, Gold's is great. I don't have anything against Gold's, but I probably wouldn't go to Gold's if it wasn't just for the convenience Convenient. factor. If I wanted to go somewhere else, it would be sort of the same situation, but just a longer drive. Like LA Fitness, it's going to be the same crowd. It's a lot of high school people. Now that the college is out and it's summer. It's getting busy. We just, like you can tell, there's another influx of people coming in. Um, But it's a great gym and they have have everything I need. Um, So it's fine for now. Eventually, Eventually, I'd like to get back to a situation like a studio fitness where it's a little more private. The, the the private gyms I mean being at studio with how great it is and the like the environment I'm just kind of ruined for big box gyms yeah like it's just it sucks yeah I went to one with my cousin a fitness connection it was like the lowest of the low and yeah. it was so like no yeah. I can get the uh, why it's appealing to some people though like. The socialization aspect and stuff. Nobody's a lot of people, it's a social club. Nobody's right. social, though. I was like, hey, y'all using that? And they would just look at me like, yeah, yeah. why the fuck are you talking to me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll just take your shit next time. How about that? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. trying to be polite. Hey, how's it going? You know, just people would need... Yeah. Me and my cousin are sitting in the sauna. Dude walks in. Hey, man, how's it going? He didn't even look up. Yeah. Like, cool. Let's sit within three feet of each other for the next 20 minutes and... Yeah, Let's people don't. People are just fucking. Rude. The big box gym is it's tough though when you go by yourself. Like if you go work out by yourself, it's just like for me anyway. It's just kind of it's weird. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have a training partner. Yeah, it helps. You, it is. Yeah, yeah. You you need someone there with you. And I've met some guys there, um, but I just I don't really like them. They're the <laughs> they're the, they're the they're the like meathead. What's up, bro? Like we maxing out today, kind of guys. And it's like, dude, that. We're not gonna get anything done. Yeah. So yeah. I just I kind of just let them do their thing, and and I'll talk to them every now and then. Um, you do to them like you do to us. Like oh, I don't even think I could lift that once, and then you do eight reps. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You let them peacock around a little bit, and then. Yeah, man. They they break their uh, spirits. They're the guys that have been lifting there for years, and they like all have their click. 
And I'm just like... Yeah, it's their gym. Yeah, yeah, basically. You're basically going into their gym. And it depends, like, I like to go... I mean, you can't go at 5.30. That's the worst Like time. p.m.? Yeah, like that's... I mean, you're not getting any... You're not getting anything done. There's so what time are you going these days? Does it depend on your day? It depends on the day, but if I'm if I if it's just an office day, which mainly at this point it is, I'll just roll in at like three and get it in right before. It's probably perfect. It's perfect because I, I do my all my stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll get up in the office at whatever eight thirty nine o'clock and just do whatever and whatever I need to do that day. Um, a lot of the times it's not much. A lot of times I'm just looking for opportunities. Um, with the commercial stuff, but yeah, I, I, I have, if I can, I avoid the main times because it's just, it's not worth it anymore. Big box gyms are, are, you know, they're for people who want to be in that environment. And I just, well, it depends on what you want too. Cause like you can't go performance train at a big box gym. No, nah, you know I mean, what I mean? You can, but everyone's going to be like, what the fuck is this guy? Doing? Well, that, they're just not yeah. set up for it. Right. Yeah. Our I program mean, that we have our online, I just jumped into my cousin's workout and people were like, what are y'all doing? Like yeah. snatches and yeah. like people, it was. People We're were, actually doing things that make you. Yeah. Yeah. It you can do so the way it's set up. Um, it was previously. I just learned this, and I, I always was kind of wondering why it was like this. Um, it was previously a twenty-four. So they have a section that used to be a basketball gym, um, and they have that made to where you kind of can do some performance style stuff, and they have their their squat, like their squat racks, deadlift area. Um, and they have, they kind of have a big area. It's not like turf or anything. It's, it's still rubber floors, but it's, you can kind of do whatever. Yeah. Um, and there's some people in there, like specifically there's this group of girls who are into like the kind of training that we do and I see them doing their thing. Um, I just get, I got away from it because I just, I don't, I don't want to be in the middle of a hundred people yeah. doing that shit. And that, that's, that's where I, the, the drawbacks kind of, you know, it's a beautiful gym, great equipment, but it's a different environment. Yeah, because that, and they usually don't have space either. Like, Mm-mm. you can't go do power cleans or whatever and yeah. shit like that. And like I said, there, there's a little bit of space where you could set it up right. if you wanted to. I mean, you'd have to go out of your way. But you yeah. got to carry the bar and then you got to carry the weights and yeah. Yeah, and then you're just fucking everybody up on. Yeah. Because then there's a squat rack with no bar and everyone's like, who's using this? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, yeah. dude. Segue into the place we're going in Austin. Dude, Chase, <clears throat> pull up the collective with a K. Dude, dude it might be. It's my the coolest gym I've ever seen in my life. It's like, like my, my long term, ten years down the road, this is what we're building. Yeah, because it's got a whole shared workspace upstairs. So for the you know everybody's working from home thing, you can just literally shower and go upstairs and do your day mm-hmm. at the gym. Yeah, they have everything. It's. Maybe pull it up on uh, Instagram. Well, they ain't gonna back up. <clears throat> no, they have like a two minute video where they have a drone like fly in and Dude, tour the whole place. It is amazing. So yeah, we're going to Austin this weekend. Uh, what's it called? The Big Three Workshop. Yeah. Barbells, kettlebells, and landmines. Landmines. Uh, click no <coughs> chase right there. Well, if you go to their website, they have like the the video. I can't imagine what this gym cost, but it's my is. There's it's, two of them too, isn't there? Yeah, so we're going to the north location, which I believe is the second location. And y'all are going for like like a learning opportunity. It's a workshop. You can mute yeah. it if you need to, Chase. We got for like our CECs and stuff. But I mean, the music's dope. But you know, uh, brought you know Rain Rain Train on mm-hmm. Instagram. He's he's doing it. Uh, kettlebell guy. So like, this is a performance guy. gym. That's all it's set up for. But it still has everything you ever. But then do. over there in that corner, I mean, you'll you'll see it all. So that's all like you know, mobility, stretching, rehab, rehab. rehab. Yeah. <clears throat> then they got the bodybuilding area, which is still pretty selective for what you normally see. But just a lounge, dude. That's so dope. This is like the perfect combination of private and big box. This that's is their shared workspace. This is where. So like they have oh my conference God, rooms dude, where you can perfect. rent it out. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast it's am- room. It's amazing up there, dude. And that's exactly what I'm yeah. sure they run a podcast out of there. How many square feet do you think that is? Ten thousand. <sighs> da- yeah, that's not I that mean, big. Really. Downstairs I mean, it, is probably ten to fifteen, and then they have this upstairs, and then they have like the saunas and the cold plunges. I mean, they have everything there. That's exactly what we want to. And look, if you notice too, like they only had a handful of treadmills. There wasn't a lot. No, they don't need a lot. Exactly. 
It's because it's not what people are doing in there, really. Yeah, I mean, dude, you, know. you can buy shoes there. <sighs> they have their whole—is that their own brand? You think, or they? No, they're, they're probably just selling. They probably got a few wholesale accounts through like right outside, right of outside of Dallas, man, or Austin. Austin. Yeah. I'm as I'm as excited about the gym as I am about <laughs> what we're gonna learn. Like I just want to tour the place. Yeah, man. I mean, if you can, if it, you can upfront the cost. I mean, you could. I'm just, sure they had investors and. Oh yeah, which we could get. But they're really good at obviously marketing themselves and getting big name trainers in their gym. Well, but the big name trainers are chasing that facility, right? And Austin, for whatever reason, has a bunch of. Well-known trainer. It's where everybody's going now. People yeah. aren't going to Dallas. They're moving to... Well, Austin's like the new LA, almost. Yeah. It's like... I don't know. But yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be dope. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Y'all are doing that when? Sunday. Sunday. So Sunday. we're going down Saturday. We got a hotel room. And then it's from like 8 to 2.30. Yeah, dude, we're going to go learn all the stuff. Full workout at the end, but they're going to do professional videos, photography for us, and all the stuff. It's, yeah. It's dope. It's dope, man. Yeah. So, you want to go? <laughs> yeah, come on. They got open spots. You don't need it, but let's go. <laughs> I'll go to the collective mm. this weekend. Yeah. Um, you can bunk up with all Evan here. Yeah, I'll think dude, we can all that. four share a bed. We look. We Hell look today. Yeah, they got. They got what? Six open spots left. Yeah, it's three hundred bucks. Which again, you'll never use it, but <laughs> be fun. Why wouldn't I use that? Well, just for, like for your career, like for your. I mean, you use it for your own knowledge. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I still, I still take time to to learn. I mean, I, I'm still in the, yeah, I'm still interested in all the stuff. Yeah. I and mean, that'll that'll never change. Oh, for sure. Yeah, dude, I'll think about going to that. That looks really cool. We're leaving. You're leaving your house at what, like ten thirty? Well, I have to drive to his house in Maybank. You said you're going off. Saturday. Yeah, I got something going Saturday. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we. I texted Jesse. Asked if he's gonna call in because he's just at the time is flight. Like one fifteen, so he's just sitting there. What time is it right now? Twelve thirty. They're probably boarding already. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? And his brother's getting a master's from the new school. Just the new school. I've never heard of it, but it's apparently very prestigious in the like liberal arts world. Huh? Never heard of it. It's mm-hmm. like one hundred twenty years old. I think they need to change the name. What's his specialization? <laughs> uh, creative writing. <coughs> creative writing. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Your cough turned off the lights. <laughs> no, how? It's a you clap, clap light? light? Yeah. That, that pace. Do it. One, two. There you ah, go. That's cool. <laughs> that's, that's, dope. that's dope. We're amused by the simplest things. <laughs> Don't think much, man. Um, I used to have the, uh, the little Alexa hooked up to my lights in college. Yeah, it's like super easy to do. Yeah. And it had like all the colors and shit. It'd be like, hey, Alexa, turn them on to blue. Do you have to get, is it special lights? Yeah, Mm -hmm. they're like $20 bulbs. Yeah. Like it's really cheap. And they just all hook together and then you can just, it was kind of finicky though. They've probably gotten better. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was what, four or five years ago. Yeah. That's dope. So what's your workout routine like? It's the same old. I'm probably doing the same sort of stuff that I was doing when I was at studio, just without the functional stuff. Looking beefy, dude. What are you weighing? Like 200. Wow. That's kind of sane, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much yeah. the same. I mean, I'm always... I just... I well, just that's tr- up for you. Yeah, it's it's a little up. I was probably running like 190. Yeah. When you first started, you like 185. Yeah, when I first Which is why everybody alcohol. thought you were so big, because you're just so lean. Yeah. Because it's... Dan uh, on Friday, he's like, dude, Steven's got to be 210. He's 190. Yeah. But he's 8%. He doesn't look 190, though. He's 8% body fat. So his freaking arms and shoulders. Well, his are legs huge. are just freaking ginormous, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, I'm, yeah, I'm just a little bit, just a little bit bigger. I would like to get down uh, again. Back Don't do to, it. Yeah. My, do my it. mom was trying to get Steven to like go get the suit and everything. He's like, I got to put on a little bit more muscle. He's like, mom was like, it's not, you're not going to be able to see it in the suit. Like right. your measurements aren't going to change. Yeah. I dropped 10 pounds in what, February? Yeah. It was not worth it. At all, yeah. He got down. You were like, looking tight, though. He, he it's just so. His, he but lost the thing a is, lot of mass in his arms and his legs. The thing and for me is though, like the way I, I learned this doing it's the first time I ever did like a true cut. I lose arms, legs. This stays relatively the same. Yeah. <laughs> so I just it just went to shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
The one thing he was trying to lose was around his waist, and he didn't. Yeah, yeah. it's the last thing to go. I'm I'm just not into. I mean that that like look and lean thing for me was always just that's how my body was. Well, you were still a kid. You're very like you're coming out of college. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, and now I'm I'm still kind of the same, but I have a little bit of weight on me, and that's comfortable for me. I I like being. It was gonna happen. Yeah, it's just gonna happen. Yeah. See, now I'm stuck at 195. It's hard for me to get back up to 200. Yeah. So it's almost not even worth it. No. To go down. No. Because the thing is, like, my strength went down, my performance in the gym went down, and you just feel better being bigger. Yeah. Like, even if you are a little thicker in the midsection, it's but I, totally I think worth that's it. healthy, man. It's worth it, though. Yeah. I saw, this is kind of random, but I saw, uh, what's his name? The guy, the Baywatch guy, uh, Zach Efron. Yeah. He was talking about, like, what he had to do to get in that shape. And it's he, miserable, right? He was like, I will never be in that <clears> shape <throat> again because there's no point. I mean, you look good for a movie yeah. or you look good for whatever, a couple yeah. months, and then you just crash. The dude from um, Always Sunny, that, you know, the oh, he fat, got jacked up. Yeah, dude. did you see? He, I, I think I sent it to the Instagram group. If I didn't, I will. Um, he's like, You can totally look, look like this if you can just abandon your family. You get no time with your wife and kids. Mm-hmm. If you have a personal chef and you just happen to know, like, the trainer from, um, Magic Mike, and he just you know comes to your house twice a day, like just he did. He's like it's totally attainable. You just have to like do that's your whole your whole life. life you yeah. have to put your whole life on pause just yeah. to do it. It's, it's yeah, no, it's not worth it. No, like I'd like to get back down to like one eighty five and like one ninety one, one ninety two, but like I don't want to. The thing is, like, like I, it's it's a great dream, but I'm not gonna do it. Your life's I'm so still much better probably too. Probably gonna have a beer tonight, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. The, your life's so much better when you can have a beer, eat what you want to eat, eat relatively good. We all do, but. Yeah. I still enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You live so much, in my opinion, healthier when you have a little bit more on you. Like if you're just if you're just depriving yourself of everything just to look like that. Like and what's the thing the is, point? no one gives a shit either. <laughs> what yeah. Not uh, one person cares. Yeah. I think it was before, for you before you got to work this morning. Jesse said the new thing that people want to look like. They called it a uh, heroin chic. Heroin chic. So you look like you're on heroin, but you know you're just. You're wearing designer shit. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's like the model thing. Mm-hmm. No like, one, no one gives a fuck. No. No. When I looked, when I was 180, 185 and shredded and whatever, I posted my story. I think I'm hot shit. No one gives a fuck. No. No. I post whatever something now, just a little bit bigger with, with some meat on me. No one's still, <laughs> still, no, one still no one cares. No one wants to, no one wants to see you. That's, said, that's basically what people need to realize. No one cares. It's for you. I said something for to sure. um, my daughter's cheer coach. She runs a like competitive cheer gym about the body dysmorphia in men. I was like, I beat myself up. Like going to your kid's birthday parties, and I'm like, oh, I got to take my shirt off. I'm like 16% body fat. And she goes, you're the most fit person I know. And I'm like, well, of my friends, I'm the fattest person I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're also. I mean, we're also in a category that that doesn't fit the the population. You yeah, know? exactly. If you're the if you're the like on the lower end of this group, you know this whatever they call it the one percent. If you can lift and do all this kind of stuff, you're good. Yeah, you know, as long as you're as long as you're you're keeping it up. Yeah, according to my end body, I've lost ten pounds of fat since January. Nobody's noticed. <laughs> Nobody's commented. <laughs> At one point, my mom goes, "You're looking skinny," and I was like, "I'll freaking punch you right now." Yeah, she meant to Dude, say lean. But skinny is worse than being called fat. Yeah, I got so mad at her. Yeah, when especially when you're, you're when you whatever. lift yeah, and yeah. you work out a lot, and people are like, "Oh, you look skinny." I'm like, "Don't like, say." None that. of our friends commented on it. No, like nobody noticed it at all. There may be in your whole life one or two people that are actually paying attention to what you look like. It's mostly me. It's me. I'm the one. Everybody else. It's us right it. here. <laughs> We're paying attention yeah. to each other. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I pulled up like pictures back when I was like 175 and Carly, I said, I'm going to get back to this. She goes, no, you're not. I, I, I don't want you there. There's just, yeah, there's no reason. Mm-mm. There's no reason. It, it's good to have goals and it's good to, to whatever for your mindset to achieve them and do all that kind of stuff. But in terms of if you're doing it because you want people to notice, they're not. Yeah. Um. Somebody at the gym, I think I told you, I might have told, she doesn't know what it says, Rachel McGavin. Mm-hmm. She got on the end body and it was May to May, nothing changed. 
Like her weight was like half a pound. Her muscle was like half a pound. Her fat mm. was like 0.2% difference, a percent. She goes, oh, is that good? I said, yeah. Yeah, if you don't have any true specific goals, that's yeah. exactly what she you said. Want. I'm not working towards anything. I said, no, you're that's just perfect. living. Yeah. You're if at you, the gym five days a week. You feel good. You're healthy. Yeah. You're good. And she was 19% body fat. Yeah, that's pretty low. That's pretty good for. It's really good. Yeah. She was like, um, is that good? I was like, yeah, you're doing pretty good. You're That's like, that's a whole story in and of itself. Yeah. There is no transformation. You just, you're healthy. If yeah. you look the way you want to look, then maintaining is winning. Yeah, but we talked about that with Jesse before we left. Did we? He he was talking about like he he's like yeah I'm a little fatter than I want to be. But he's like but I feel good. I have he has he's, he was like I have the amount of muscle I want to have. He's pretty beefy right now. That told me the other day. I was like he's getting thick, dude. Like, like in a good in way. a muscular yeah. way. Yeah, he's his back his back is thick. I noticed before I even left. He was, I mean, he was looking better than when I first met him. Well, yeah, because he went from 25% to 18% body fat. Yeah. Like that, it was a big deal. That's a change. That's a big change. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably still, I'm probably still under 10% body fat, but that's just because I don't, I mean, I'm not going to, I'd have to actively try to go over that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even want to work to get there. Like my, my, my comfortable was what's the word? My homeostasis is like thirteen percent, yeah, twelve percent. So I can I can maintain that without trying to do anything. I can maintain fifteen year yeah. round, yeah, like all the time. It's easy, especially now because I have a different job. Like the the training thing isn't the biggest part of my life anymore, and I'm still just staying the same because I'm just doing I'm doing my lifts like I would always do mm -hmm. them, and eating what I want, whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you're eating what you want is healthy. Yes, I I eat healthy. I always have, and that's why it's. I mean, it's a bigger deal if if you're the kind of person who doesn't work out and you eat like shit. Now you have to change everything about yourself. Yeah, it's hard. That's when it's like fuck. That that's your whole transformation. That's when you start getting to some actual like goals yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, what's is anything new with the gym? Y'all got any like no. big clients um, or anything that you're working with? We have, no, we have a couple new guys. I saw Jer is Jeremy full time now. Yeah, well, he he's there. I mean, he's not training full time, but he, he's full -time. committed to it. Yeah. yeah, he's doing really good. Yeah, he's good. He's gonna be good once we we need to spend more time with him. But like three people yesterday were like, he's a good fit for y'all without me prompting it at all. They're like, Les texted me out of nowhere. I mean, he trained him on it because I was out sick, yeah. but uh, he was like, man, he did a great job. Yeah, he's good. Um. I think the difference with him and most is like in the middle of a session, he'll come and ask for help. And that makes a big difference because I don't want to go and like correct something you're doing because I don't want to make you feel bad in front of your client, but he'll just come and open it up for you. And that helps so much because I'll forget like a mental note. It's gone. Five minutes. It's gone. Yeah. So he, it's better to do that than to just assume something. And, and well, and the clients wrong. understand too, like all right, the clients we have, like they understand that he's new to it. He's not going to be perfect. They, I think they like that he will ask questions, though. Yeah. Because he wants to do a good job for them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, Christy made a note of it yesterday that, like, he, it, she mentioned it, like, he asked y'all for help. He, there's no pride there. And she probably would work with him because of that. Right. Or she wouldn't work with a lot of people. Every time I'm off, she's like, have fun. I'm like, I can get you a trainer. Yeah. She won't do it, but she might with him. <laughs> One of uh, Jesse's clients said that he hated working out with me. Um, yeah, uh, John. Yeah, she, uh, Ginger told Jesse this morning. She I was like, said, yeah. I was like, I thought we had a great session. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'll work out with Nathan because Evan doesn't give a shit if you feel bad." <laughs> I'm like, it's kind of true. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm gonna push you if you want me to, but if not, like, you're gonna get out of this what you want. If you want to just coast through this, well, that's see, fine. I struggle with that though because I know. I mean, you know this too. People are so much more capable than they want to be. Yeah, and so and there's a fine line, but it's uh, you got to baby step them into it though. Yeah, and when I'm filling in for you for one day, it's like if you want to just Coach. get a good workout in, and we're not killing you today, that's fine. Mm -hmm. like, we'll just have a conversation, and we'll get a little bit done. But I don't need to kill you because yeah. on Monday you're not my problem. Well, it's also a matter too of what they're used to. Like if you train for me for three years, you're used to a certain way, and then you go train with Jesse, who might be a little slower, do things differently. It's gonna be very very different for that client. It also depends on who they Which watch you train. Which isn't a bad train. thing. If they watch you train Julie and she's just in there like, oh my God, Evan, I hate you. That's just her getting through the hour. She would never 
actually quit training with you. No, she loves it. She just she loves it, but she has to bitch her way through. Yeah. So if they yeah. watch that, they're like, "Oh my god, he's mean." Mm-hmm. Like, no, that's Julie. Yeah. So. Julie wants to die. That's what she's here for. Yeah. She wants it to be hard. Yeah. But like, you put Kendra through the same workout. She never comments on it. She's fine the whole time. Yeah. It's true. I enjoy training training Kendra. Yeah, dude, she's the best. She's, she's just she just does it. And you can tell when it's getting hard for her. But. Every once in a while, she'll give me a certain look. And I know it's time to like settle down. Yeah, but yeah. for the most part, she'll do whatever. Everyone, everyone just has to get to the point, and this is just with fitness in general. You have to get to the point where you accept that it's not going to be easy. No, it's not. It's not supposed to be. Yeah, and if it is, then you're probably not doing something right. Right. Yeah, we're here to be. It's supposed to be hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. The biggest thing with people is like they don't understand that working out. It's not easy, dude. Yeah. This is the only hour it's, of your day that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's okay. But as soon as you're done, you're going to feel great. It's the runner's high, man. You got to you got to make it hard for yourself so the rest of the day you're like, man, I did chilling. Something. Well, I, I think the I difference is the runner's high hits while they're doing it. Mm-hmm. The endorphin release a lot of times doesn't hit until you're on your way out. Yeah. It's like, man, I feel good now. Yeah. I have never experienced runner's high. It's stupid. I've I, ran the most I've ever ran at one time. It was like five miles. So I don't know if that's even long enough to get. I think that's like at the precipice really? of it. Yeah. Yeah. I just hate it every time. It sucks. I yeah. hate running. But we played volleyball for four hours Friday. Dude. That was so fun. It was, and yeah, I burned almost 3,000 calories playing, no, 2,000. I was at 2,700. Okay, I was almost, yeah, I was saying, like 25. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot, and it was fine. I wasn't even sore. I can go, but I can go play games all day. Yeah. You know? I would rather do that than run. Well, Carrie yeah. takes off out the door sprinting. She comes back, and she's like hobbling and limping the next day. Now, that, uh, how often do we have four hours to play volleyball? Every Friday. True. No, True. not really. But but dude, we've been doing uh, spike ball almost almost every day we can. What, 30, Th- 45 minutes? Three I'll days burn. a week. That's like uh, it, perfect zone two cardio. In an I mean, hour, I'll burn about 600 calories. Yeah, dude. Average heart rate like 120. And I'm just playing games all the time. It's mm-hmm. fun. I've yeah. always been basketball. Basketball's always been Yeah, you cardio. still play, don't you? Yeah. Actually, Where do you play right I now? I actually joined a league. No shit. So the Golds doesn't have a gym. Uh, doesn't have a basketball gym, yeah. and I I thought about going to like an LA or something just so I could have one. Yeah. Um, but I kind of got saved because of the guys that I'm talking about that I was gonna uh, room with they started a basketball team, and I joined it. So we'll do thir- Thursday night as the games, and then uh, one of them uh, the dad works at a middle school in Frisco, and so he'll open up the gym on Saturdays. Oh, that's amazing, dude! It's awesome. Like private gym, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's the See, best. I tried to join a soccer league, and I pulled my calf. Two days before the season started. Yeah. Like, ah, so are you just like dominating that league right now? I mean, I wouldn't say dominating. I'm I'm You're definitely close, I'm definitely <laughs> one of them. I'm the major driving force behind the team. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the guys, it's just an experience. They're just doing it for fun. Uh, I actually brought when I joined the team. I brought some dudes that I played uh, that were on my high school team mm-hmm. that still live in Frisco, and I brought those two. Um, and then one of the guys that's in the group was on our high school basketball team. So there's four of us from from the All team. Oh, pretty good. And we're, yeah, we're the, the good players. Yeah. You know, and then a couple of the other guys uh, are, are pretty decent, but for the most part, everyone's just trying to have fun. Yeah. Um, Dude, I would kill to be in. I loved playing basketball, and I'm so bad at it. I, I mean, I got it's better fun, it's as fun the to be. It doesn't matter, though. Like, you're no. not bad, though. It's different. Well, I just play defense. Yeah. Like, that was my thing. I did you, not shoot. You on our team would be one of the better players. See, oh, well, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, and it's fun because we're they put us they had we had one game which this is kind of bullshit. They had one game and they seed you, and we just got blown out because it was a team that is guys that you can tell they've done this before. Yeah, yeah. So we got blown out, got put in the C division. So we're just you know we're just winning games. Because, we have to work our way back up. Yeah, I mean we I don't know what the the playoffs look like or yeah. anything, but yeah, we're in this division where I'll go in in a forty minute game uh, with a running clock. I'll drop like 25, 30 points. But it's just because we're, it's almost more fun because we don't have to go and try that hard. Right. Like yeah. if, if we, you're literally just having fun. Like we just, look, yeah, we look over at the court next to us and it's the A division and it's like dudes that could probably play overseas. Yeah. And it's like, dude, we would, we would hate, like if we, it's not fun. So I want to get in the B division. The B would be like, that's where we would competitive. be more competitive. The yeah. C, I, I'm telling you, man, the C league games are competitive too. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of good teams, but, for whatever reason, dude, basketball, there's a lot of good basketball players out there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's dudes that you look at, that be you think they'd be trash, and they're amazing. Dude, so when I played at the Rise, now this was like eight years ago. 
I've never played before. So, like, they'd take me to 24 and kind of, like, teach me stuff. And I picked it up. This is a basketball. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> That's just, a hoop. <laughs> but so I just played defense. But by the end of the season, I was getting better. But I was the tallest guy on our team. That's I'm five ten. That's not good. Also, <laughs> the only white guy. Yeah, it was and well, let me put it that way. It's fine. Yeah, and there was guys that could not. Yeah, they were like that's five amazing, eight. dude. Yeah, it was crazy. Best, so basketball, so it's just a sport that everyone played growing it's an up. Equal so sport everyone though, has seriously. something. That so then they, I got Adrian, a, who's six seven, and yeah. his nephew, who's six five, and uh, Adrian's brother, who's six six. And then the game changed because it was just like <laughs> you didn't play anymore. <laughs> no, I still played, but they wouldn't play defense. Like they were just like, I'm gonna dunk and then I'm gonna walk back. So I'm like sprinting end to end. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, but like they were just like, we're just gonna dunk, dude. Yeah. Played, Nobody would shoot ever. I played the rise uh, right out of high school. I was like 19, probably. It was me and some buddies from high school, and like we were decent. Dude, like, I we bet all I, played. I bet I played you because this was like 2013, <sighs> probably, 2014. Probably. I bet I played you. Remember one game we played? It was a bunch of. I say old dudes. There's like one of 40 year old dudes. They ran a train on us. Dude. Mm-hmm. Like we thought for sure we were going to smoke Sexual. them. They, dude, they <laughs> murdered us. Was that in the parking lot or on the? <laughs> yes. Yes. I that played. crazy. Dude. I played in a rise league for a month before I left. For real? Did I tell you all that? Yeah. Yeah. I was the guys that I would Maybe play with did. at 24. Because I was playing at 24 every day. Uh-huh. And I, I had a group of guys that I was playing with um, and they made a league. Dude, that's twenty four. Yeah, I, get I tried crazy. to get up there, but I just couldn't have fun of time because I know the guy that runs the league. Um, I can't remember his name, but I know him through a guy, and um, it's the same group of guys I used to play with. A bunch of short black dudes. Yeah, and, we played those guys. Yeah, they're good. They're pretty good. We were. They've been playing together since they were in high school, and they're like thirty three. Yeah. See, those games were like a league competitive games. They have chemistry, and it's it's so much. The the game is so much different. What I'm doing now, it's just. It's competitive, but it's. I mean, dude, that uh, that new place off thirty, yeah, um, uh, Sport, America Sports, yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Dude, have you seen that? Mm-mm. It's like the rise, but it's kind of put the rise like out on of steroids. Business. The rise fucking sucks, man. They need to get their <laughs> shit together. Well, there's been nothing compared to like there's been nothing else. So the rise has been able to get maybe away it's Amera Sports, a Mary people A M R I. People complain about it smells. Mm-hmm. It, like, it smells like a dirty diaper in there. Well, it's the, been the exact same since I was like the a parking lot kid. sucks. The turf sucks. So, but where else are you gonna go? Dude, when I used, pulled up for the first game, I was like, dude, where am I? <laughs> dude, I used to play baseball, so we used to have it used to be a hitting practice at the rise in middle school. It hasn't changed since what fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've played flag football up there. I've played yeah, basketball it. up there, soccer up there, and everything would end in fights. That's why I quit going up there. Yeah, I wish I lived closer, man. I would join the league so I fast. Know. I don't want, but think, I mean, I would be fine, but I don't want to go play with a bunch of random guys. With time, it'd get better, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that place is gonna be nice. I think they're doing. Uh, Dude, I feel like there's cheerleading like, out of that they're too. They're doing all kinds of stuff. Dude. There's like ten basketball courts, I'm racquetball, assuming, pickleball, pickleball. I'm assuming that's where the cheer athletics is going to be based yeah. out of. It's at the rise right now, I think. Yeah, but so this is where off thirty. It's uh, like in the industrial part. Yeah, right? so by yeah. John King. Yeah, 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 dude. I mean, if this place is if this place is just clean at the minimum. Well, it's new, so it's going to be clean. And it's they function the the leagues properly. The rise will be like. Shit. Well, the rise that was a problem is the refs didn't have control of anything, so fights would break out. They quit doing flag football because of the fights. Yeah, we got in fights in basketball. We got in fights in soccer. Dude, I did. I was in the league for like probably five, six weeks, and we only played three games because people just wouldn't show up. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, fun. That sucks. And you take time out of your weekend because it's on like Sunday nights, and yeah. That's why I couldn't do I couldn't do Sunday nights. Yeah, and they were by the end of the game, people like I mean it was it wasn't a fight, but people were just you didn't leave going that was fun. Yeah, you and left going oh I want to fucking kill this dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, the ref like that's why I believe we did down by your place, dude. Yep, guys Crazy. show up and they start acting like it's Super Bowl Sunday, and it's like well you still have flags on, so it's not. And yeah. that wasn't even like that was just random, wasn't it? Is there no? Is there refs? I can't remember. Well, they would take like people that weren't playing and, and like, hey, can you ref? It did not go and good. And it did not go well. I mean, they were there trying was, to like get it going. There were some but, shady dudes over there too, man. Yeah, the, the shady dudes that showed up. That's why we all quit going. Yeah, it was at the high school down there in Eustis. We played Mesquite too. That was shady. That had refs. 
But yeah, that's right. The game started at like nine thirty in Mesquite. Yeah, and you'd play like four games, so you'd be out there till like one in the morning, and it's like we did it one time out there. Yeah, and I mean we did pretty good. Me and you went out there. We did pretty mm-hmm. good, but I mean we were competitive. But I was like, I'm like I had a gun in my bag. Like uh, this is shady. Yeah, we. We're on our games are on Thursday nights and it's either nine or ten. Cool. That's why. That's why I, that's bedtime, why I had dude. to quit doing. I know. I know you. So. <laughs> My bedtime's changed a little bit now that I don't have to get up in the morning. True. Um, like, but you play that game at ten o'clock. It's thirty minutes away from where I live. Still, it's in Frisco. Mm. Um, so we get done at what eleven. You get home at eleven thirty, twelve, and I'm just like, fuck. But yeah, that's tough. I. Love basketball. That's the thing. Is like, so it's worth it. it. Yeah, yeah. It's just worth it. Like to yeah, hang dude. out with those guys, play basketball. Well, it's, like it, I it, said, you don't have the responsibility of getting home and getting the kids in bed and spending quality time with your wife. So you need something. Yeah, I'm at the point though where like I need some some sort of competitive something. I would like to play softball. And my kids are fun. dude old enough for the most part. Softball that I could I could get away a night a week. Yeah, we have a. We actually play golf with with one of the guys who works with my dad. Um, he's a sales guy for us. He has been doing softball leagues for years, and it's like a big part of his life. I yeah. fucking hate softball. Stupid. It's the whatever. <laughs> I one, struck out like one 18 pitch. times, bro. Dude, we we went and did like a. I'm so like used a to fast pitch. I could not wait on the ball. I swung early You're every just, single time. We went and did a charity thing. It was like a. You know, everybody got together, got their teams together. It was a one-day thing, and he struck out the first time at bat. He was our first guy at bat. I was like, I'm good, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> and, and they're just so lobbing it to you. We showed up. Nah, Evan's got to do it. Why does it only work when he does it? He's got to be bro. close. We showed up. We're in our early 20s at the time, and they were like, oh, good. We have some young guys. And then he strikes out. <laughs> I'm so pissed. <laughs> it was so funny. That Did my dad funny. come out there with us? Yeah, dude. Your whole family did. Steven and my dad played. I think so. Yeah. Dude, that would be really it was fun. fun. I played in a church league, and then they were like, so you have to come to church. Mm. So you can't go to no. you can't go to the Saturday morning game <laughs> and then not go to church Sunday. <laughs> you can. Well, they didn't like it when you showed back up next week, though. That was the problem. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, it's part of it. I was in this... I was still living in Frisco. We would go to these Wednesday night runs at a church, and like they would start with like a whatever a prayer and stuff like that, and, and then, then basketball, and then we play basketball, and then they were. I mean, they were trying to get you to go to their church. Yeah, and we didn't know that was going to happen. People were just like, "Hey, come to these runs at, on Wednesday mm-hmm. or whatever," and we showed up, and I was like, "This is not what I thought. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be like you know, it was at a church. I guess I should have realized what that was." Yeah. Going. Uh-huh. But, it, I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to drive 30 minutes to go to church on Sunday just because I want to play in a basketball league. But yeah. I get it. Like, if that's your if that's your church and everything, then and that's how you want to run it, that's a good idea. But, yeah, that's – I can't get on board with that. No. That's why I like a spike ball. It gives me a little taste of something. Yeah. We don't take it super serious, It would be fun to go find, like, a when they set all the – the things up and have like a tournament. Yeah. It's a day thing. It'd be fun. I feel like we'd be decent. Yeah. Have y'all ever, Ryan has that whatever spike ball. We've never app. done it, but You've we've never, been talking about it for years. And we've never done it. Dude, I, I feel I, like we could be decent. Y'all could get in a spike ball, whatever game or league, like by the end of this week. I know. They do them all the That's time. That's how many people play that sport. Yeah. Is it a sport? It's a recreational sport. It's on the Ocho, so. <laughs> it's a. Uh, have you all seen? Man. Have you all seen spike ball with pickleball rackets? He sent the other day. I just saw that. Yeah, that I probably fun. saw the same video you did because I think I sent it to the group that you're in. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks cool though. I, I could get on board with that. I've heard pickleball's fun, but yeah, I've never played. Played one time. We actually have a set of rackets. We played over at in Chandler's um, when we were when we were living over there. It's really fun. I could get into that, but. Dude, where I'm at, I mean, there's no, like, we're 20 minutes away from basically any real city. Yeah. Y'all are 20 minutes outside of Frisco. Yeah, we're 20 minutes outside of Frisco. We're, we're five minutes outside of Little Elm, but Little Elm ain't. Little Elm's not a city. It's it a town. Yeah, it ain't yeah. nothing. Yeah, I, I need some people that lived out there. Here is, like, this city, like the Rockwall Heath thing, there is just so much going on where you could get in something. 
It, but it has that's to the be thing. Like, I don't know. I don't hear about anything ever. That's because you don't know people. Well, you shouldn't have to. Dude, I, w- I was playing basketball at 24 for whatever, four, uh-huh. four or five months. And I was in basketball leagues. They were hitting me up about flag football games. I mean, you got to so you got to go get in it yeah. before they'll before you get. Or you got to know somebody that's doing it. I would yeah. love flag football. I don't know that they do that anymore at the rise. It was too physical. Well, I'm sure they do it somewhere else though. Where? Bro. Oh. Every time someone hits me up about a flag football league, I'm like, yeah, and then they just never do it. They huh. Just don't hit me it's up. It's so fun. I did. Whatever the intramurals in in college yeah, flag football, fun. dude, you played football. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, in the off season, I do the intramurals <laughs> flag football. You just can't hit people. That's the problem. Very different. The yeah. flag football is a different game, dude. Got to have the uh, when they're doing the fucking like the hip spinning thing, dude. and the hips and stuff. I'm like, bro, those I, things sneak if out. If we hands. were playing real football, I'd light your ass up right well, now. It's different. It's but a different I'll miss talent. a flag. I hate it, man. I hate yeah. It. Basketball. That's all I do, man. That's that's my thing. See, I'm not good at basketball because it's like a kind of like contact, but then if you like look at them wrong, they. It's like, dude, what? Yeah, I'm a little too aggressive for basketball. I fouled out. I got teed up my first game. I fouled game. out every game. Dude, we had a kid. Like it wasn't a fight, but we had a kid just throw a dude down, and I thought it was about to be like, because I mean you're in like a a big ass gym. Yeah. Like there's whatever, nine courts in this one area. I thought we were going to get kicked out. And, like, I thought that, I thought it was over. Dude, it probably happened so But the often. ref ref didn't see it, and we just went on. We're all good. I was like, what the hell? That's funny. It's like, no, like, nothing. I got teed up for telling the ref he was blind in, in my first game. And I was like, all right, I need to calm down. See, I got kicked out of the last soccer league I was in because they were. it was all Hispanic. The ref was Spanish. He didn't know English. You weren't allowed to say language, and you were not allowed to direct it at the ref. And um, so I got red carded for saying the F word. I was like, what? How so, does he know that? In the next game, I was still pissed off about it, and it was, a, it was a Hispanic guy, but he was, like, born here, second generation, so he spoke. And so I got a yellow card for the word. I feel like that. But I was talking to, like, one of my teammates. Mm-hmm. So, like, let me say it. Whatever. Dude, but the thing is, sports are emotional though. Like you so get at halftime, you get amped up, and you yeah. get. It. So then I started like, hey, they're saying it. Like if you're gonna do it to me, do it to them. I don't want to be a snitch, but they're doing it. At halftime, I walked up to him like, all right, so what's the rule? And he's like, well, if you say it to me, I'm gonna red card or I'm gonna card you. I was like, so we can say it just like to our teammates. He goes, yeah. I was like, but I cannot say fuck to you. Red carded me. It's halftime. We're just having a conversation. Asking questions. That's wild. So I just never went back. I was about to say that would be just about the end of it for me. That was the last organized sports I played. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm I'm all on board with with being competitive. I just I have to do something. It's good for you. I wish I had a gym where I could play basketball every day. I miss that. Dude, the one here at 24, it can get pretty competitive, can it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was playing like, a, high school and stuff, dude. Like, there's a group like, of Indian guys that run the, the courts. Dude, there is some good people out there, like, man. The most unassuming looking short little Indian guys, and they run the courts up there. There they did seven, eight years ago. They probably got jobs yeah. right now. They were uh, young. How yeah. time is it? 1.03. Oh, oh, we got to go. You got an appointment? The one thirty. Oh. Okay. We got a few more minutes, but... The 24 was very good runs. Like when I was out there, I was just about an average player compared to the group. What was the, was is it wood court? Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah. It's a shitty wood That's court. That's what I, I remember being not so wood. Dude, And one school. of the hoops is like nine and a half, so you can just no shit. yam on it. You can. <laughs> yeah, you can. We played in high school. Uh, what? What's the material? Is not wood. Our practice court was... This material. Um, what is it? I can't remember. It's like it's kind of like the click together. No, it was like a rubbery. Uh, I mean, what I would what I would it, say dude. is sport court, but sport court's the stuff you click together and it's like got little like squares. That's the worst. That. I mean, that's the sucks. plastic, dude. They, Lauren told me that back in the day they used to play volleyball games on that, and you dive on that. Ooh. Mm. No. Hell no! I'm not diving on that. It was like a. It was I mean, obviously it was like a hard surface, but it had a little bit of give to it. You know what I'm talking about? <sighs> like a linoleum? No. 
It's like a it's like a rubber kind of. Yeah, it's kind of. I I played on. I know what you're talking about. I don't know the word for it. I know I know the sport core is the the like plastic stuff and the wood is. I don't want to sit up. Chase, telling me to sit up. Be proper, Nathan. Well, this couch I'm like sucked into it. This chair is kind of comfy. So this yeah, is I'm, this is Jesse's spot. I'm kicking him out. Yeah, he's gonna sit here and he's I told gonna him, do this. I told him we time. should all three sit on that couch right there and leave these. That'd be funny. Just eye contact with the camera. And when you talk, it just pans to an empty chair over there. <laughs> <laughs> so no ladies in your life right now, Brock? Nah, man. Not any, really. Any dudes? <laughs> <laughs> Always got lots of dudes in my life. Not enough, if you ask me. But yeah, dude, I I haven't really been been trying. Nothing wrong with that. You don't need it right now. Nah. I kind of want it though. Yeah. Well, you are a guy still. So. I've always I've always been a relationship guy though, so that's it's tough for me. I feel that. Because I had a relationship basically all the way through high school, and then I had like a year where I was single, and then I had a relationship all through college, yeah. and now I'm like a year and a half single, and it's time. It is time. We're getting there, man. I just I don't. When you're in school, it's so easy to meet people. That's the thing. Like I can't imagine being in your shoes, dude. Trying to meet people right now. I mean, all this day and age. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk to a girl at the gym or like in a bar or something, but like, where's that go? If though? you don't close. Or if you don't get a number, if you don't make plans to talk again. I'll never again. see you again. Always be closing, Brock. Good to know you. I will never see you again. <laughs> and don't come looking. I would imagine, though, it only gets harder as you get older. Right? I mean... Yeah. That's, I'm, that's, I mean, a, I'm, that's a daunting thought for him. It's not getting easier. You better... I mean, I mean, just it's not daunting honest. for me, bro. I'm 23 years old. Yeah. Yeah. If I met a girl right now and we got married in a year, it would still be young. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. Like Steven's getting married. He's twenty three. Yeah, like, he's too young. I was twenty one, dude. I was twenty two, but like now that but I'm, you guys all had long term relationships by that point. Oh, it's nothing against Steven. I'm just like God. That's young to be getting married. And you got married before that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it though. When you're that age, though, it doesn't seem like it. Oh, uh, dude, I get so mad. People are like, yo, you're too young to be getting married. I'm like, oh well, let me just leave her then, since yeah. your opinion fucking matters so yeah. much. Oops, sorry. Well, you want me to go back? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm, I'll be good if I'm if I'm you know hanging out with someone by my late twenties, but I'm not in a rush. It'll be next week. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I find a girl I like, hey, wait, if out, it happens, then, it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if uh, that's where I'm at, I'm not gonna force anything. But if I find a girl where it's just like, all right, I want to hang you out, mesh with you. perfect. Yeah. I tried to fucking hang out with you a few weeks ago. I texted you, dude. Never even yeah, responded. We'll talk about why I didn't <laughs> okay, respond okay. after this. Yeah, we were staying at. Um, let me just like say across the street from the Frisco Star because we had a yeah, yeah. thing the next morning, and I was like, "That would have been cool if I was." We'll talk. We'll, able. Okay. Well, Physically, I got questions. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about. I just needed to get. It out. was funny because the next day, because I remember seeing your text, and the next day I was like, "I wish no, I was not." Yeah, we were stuck in an apartment with our kids and another family. I was like, "I got to get out of here." What's Brock doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I definitely would have went over there. I was, I was, yeah, we were living in, we were living in. Uh, Jesse just said, dude, I blew it. No kidding. Yeah, you did. He's probably on the plane now. Yeah, he's probably on the plane. He's, he was with his mom and dad, so I'm surprised he would have been able to get away. Yeah, it was just too much trouble. He had a better replacement anyway. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he did. I definitely feel like we've talked more today. This is our longest episode. No, I just feel like well, he Jesse. And I, Jesse even said it today he dominates the conversation. Yeah, yeah he just we had, you know Jesse though he just can't stop talking. So yeah, yeah I, I know the last time like with our last podcast the one time he didn't come we left going wow we had a good one like we <laughs> didn't just let Jesse talk <laughs> which you know whatever he's got a lot of good shit to say he's, he's a good storyteller the whole time though. he's yeah. a good storyteller for, for sure the the literally the there's one episode. Um, what 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 was it called before Dad it was bods. Father? Dad bods. Dad bods. So we went to father figure now. We're mature. We're mature. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. We're making steps. Um, yeah, the, we had one episode where we all just told stories. I'll go back and listen to that one. Yeah, Jesse was like, next week we're playing Two Truths and a Lie. And I'm like, I'm not playing that game, dude. Like, 
The people don't need to know that much. I'm wearing a red shirt, a tan hat, and I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that hat's white, so. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, you probably got to wrap it up, boys. Yeah. I need to work out. I got to work. I got to grab stuff from the house and take it back. <clears throat> what does this silly wife of mine want? Dinner tonight? Yeah. She's talking to, it's a group of our friends. Oh, fuck you guys. What is it, Wednesday? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I missed yesterday and Tuesday. I was thick. Yesterday and Tuesday. It yeah, it's funny. Same, every dude. time somebody says they're every about. time somebody says they're sick, we're like, "You're full of shit." You came to work yesterday. As soon as you walked in, I was like, "He is not good." Dude, I, yeah, I tried to work yesterday morning. I trained one appointment. I was like, "I'm going home." Dude, I was sick last week. My brother's like literally went to the emergency room yesterday. No shit. Yeah. For what? He doesn't even know. I mean, I think they ended up just saying it was some. Like, Did he just feel that bad? Yeah, he was just feeling really bad, and he thought it was something like he thought it was like strep throat or something. Mm-hmm. Tested him, nothing, and then. He was like, I, I mean, he couldn't do anything. He's been in bed for like four or five days. Yeah, dude, I I've was never been that sick. Ever. I, I had, I've never been out for more than two days. It yeah. started with a sore throat or something. Night, I could kind of feel. You know, you can feel like that one like and you're swallow. Like, like, oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I My, felt that, and then Monday morning I woke up and I was like, oh fuck, I got hit by a train. I had like fever, coughing, sore throat, and then just tired though. Like, it just sucks. Stupid you, tired. You know it's about to happen, and you're just like, Fuck. yeah, because then you got to deal with. It. I only had fever for like that morning though. It didn't last. That was the worst being sick when when I was training because I was like, "Fuck, dude, I gotta get, I gotta get people for these clients. I gotta." Talk yeah, to I them. always so hate. I hate. I hate it. It's, I, yeah, it's not like calling in. Yeah, because you have I to have text eighteen people. people you have to, to hey, orchestrate. I'm sick, hey, I'm sick. Hey, I'm sick. You have to yeah. orchestrate you not being there. Some yeah. most people understand and like it's whatever, but there's a few clients. It's like, you know, yeah, pulling teeth, but it's different for sure. But the thing like, is, like with us, like I could, I. Could have if I had an like office job, I could have sat up and worked physically. Yeah, you you got to be on your foot, f- your feet. You got to be. I, like, I'm this close to you too. Like I'm gonna get you sick. People so don't. Different. People do not like you being sick around them anymore. No, you just no. can't. You just can't do it. Even if it's whatever cold, you can't do it. Yeah, no. a few weeks ago in my class, I was just like congested, and Julie came. I had 13 people in my class, and Julie goes, "Are you sick?" Oh my god! I'm like don't just don't talk about it. <laughs> if you, but the thing is, like, if you were really sick, you wouldn't be at work. No, I probably would. Okay. Well. Like, I, I'd have to go and, like, okay, well, like you did Tuesday. I'd have to go and, like, mm, this ain't working for me. I'd try. Yeah. Monday, dude, it wouldn't happen. That that There's would no always way. happen to your like dad. Your dad would come shit. either way, and then we're he, the same. he'd be in the truck by halfway through the day. Yeah, we're the same. He's come up there an hour drive and then not gotten out of the car. He's like, I can't do it. Yeah. Well, also, your mom and dad told me this one day. when you When you get up so early like they do, you it's hard to tell. You can't tell because you're just going to feel bad anyway. Yeah. And then you drive an hour and then you're like, man. There was a few. It ain't going away. There was like two months ago, I was, I was, I woke up kind of congested. It might have been that, that same <clears throat> class with Julie where I woke up so congested and I had, I was with some friends the night before. So we had a couple of beers and I'm like, I don't think I drank enough to even feel hungover, but that's how I feel. And then it just never went away. So, yeah. like, okay, I probably am finding something, but. All right, let's wrap it up. Peace, boys. Oh, my ears are sweaty. Thanks for tuning in today to the Father Figure Fitness Podcast. For more info about our producer, Chase, and the owner of Rockwell Recording Studio, visit www.cha5e.me. Visit www.rockwallrecordingstudio.com for more details. The best place to reach us and ask questions is on our Father Figure Fitness page. It's on uh, Facebook. It's a private group, but we have a lot of dads in there that... uh, We talk about all the things pertaining to your fitness. So uh, if you have any questions, find us there and ask them and we'll answer them on our podcast. Thanks, guys.